And um, welcome to your tasting video. Someone very nice would have either bought you one of these or you would have bought it for yourself. This is the mystery cheese box. Let's get that out of the way. And um, I'm Perry. I'm Britain's first and second Affiner of the Year. And Affiner is someone who matures cheese, uses selective pressures such as uh, brushing, washing, temperature, time, humidity, a variety of different things to get your cheese absolutely perfect. And we select the very best British cheese, five cheeses to go in your box. You would have got this nice little envelope. It's not a letter from me. It's got your tasting notes in there. So if you don't want to listen to me, you can just jump into those right away. So really excited about this month, actually. We've got a brand new cheese, only newly listed online, but we're so happy with it. We're going to start off with your first cheese, which is St. Helena. God, I keep on saying St. Helena. I think we're all forgiven for doing that. Let's give this an unwrap. We've got this nice, there's a reason why I've got it wrapped this week, is because we've got this nice new paper, actually. It's keeping the cheese really well together, and it's got our brand on it, which is something that we're very, very proud of. And St. Helena is actually a wash rind cheese. So you've got this kind of peachy kind of mold that you can see in there as well. It's got this beautiful texture on the outside, but what's nice, it's got this kind of meadow mucor that's kind of happening at the moment. Nice filament molds. These are really mushroomy, but I just really want someone to engage with the aroma of this. I think I put the, the kind of the tasting note on it. I know we're having a lot of rain in August, so luckily people are eating more cheese actually, it seems like, but um, yeah, it's got that real fresh meadow rain kind of vibe to it which is absolutely stunning i'm in love with this cheese this is made by blake and uh, julie cheney over at st jude cheese they make a lovely little kind of meth marsland style and blake blake's are from i think he's from st helena um and it's just this really perfectly uh, uh cheese and mine's got a little bit of chill in it still it's still a little bit cold in here but it's got this pudgy texture but it's got this more i mean the pace but I mean, that is phenomenal. It smells so phenomenal internally. Let's have a taste. Mmm. It's. Excuse me. <laughs> wrong hole. Um, it's got this really nice meadow, dairy, mushroom kind of lightness to it. It's long. I mean, it's really, really easy going. It's got this kind of lactic vibrancy to it as well, which is quite nice at this time. Great starting cheese, which is really great. Because we're getting that kind of chewy texture that's in there as well. That dissipates nicely on the palate. So that's unpasteurized Montbilliard cow's milk, made on the same farm as Baron Vygod, by the way, using the same milk. Beautiful cheese. Next cheese we have up, wrong order. We've got Spenwood. It's been such a while since it's been in the box. Beautiful sheep's milk cheese, which is like a Manchego Pecorino style cheese. I mean, that looks so perfect as you open it. These are smaller sizes, by the way. I'm obviously not going to eat all of them. I eat enough cheese as it is. But it's got this really beautiful paste with it. We can see that slight ivory texture coming in, letting you know that it's a sheep's milk cheese. On the outside, we've got that slight washing that's going on. Nice little, oh God, the aroma is so funky and floral and really, really, I'm just gonna say like decent. You know, it's like really makes you wanna eat it. This is why we needed it in this box because it's got this kind of nice bridging texture to it. This like granular kind of texture and the aroma has got a degree of savouriness to it. The salt balance smells great. Let's have a taste. Mm. Great cheese to link in with St. Helena. Everything that that cheese was missing, you know, in a, in a positive way. Cheese doesn't have to be everything. This gives you it, that drier texture, that vibrancy is not lactic, it's more, there's a slight lemon in there, there's a slight nut that's going on as well. Sorry, someone's just calling me. <laughs> it's a part and parcel of the new location in the maturing rooms. It's getting difficult to um, get away from the windows, I suppose. Um, yeah, but we're getting that really nice kind of nut vibe, deep, savoury, salty, bit of broth that's in there. A little bit of farmhouse, but that's all right by me. Benwood, that's really, really delicious at the moment. Then we're on to Ashcombe, nearly forgot my own order. Ashcombe, now, I spent a little bit of time down in Chedworth recently um, with David and Salaman Sam, and this was just so stunning at the moment. So, 
they're really big on their like herbal lays. You know, foliage, we're talking yarrow, we're talking buttercup, we're talking clover. You know, they're really into the milk and the quality. They've got a real mixed herd of cows. This is another wash rind cheese. So we can see a little linking going ahead. I like to string them all together so they link to one another really nicely. And these just felt like they worked really well. And this kind of comes into the middle. So we've got like a dry texture, which is still a little bit youthful with the Spenwood. The St. Helena has got that buttery kind of fudginess to it. And this is kind of in the middle. That ash line in the middle is ash. This is a British Morbier style. And it's just phenomenal at the moment. It's just, we, we went down there last month. Obviously, Yarlington was on the board last month, which was great. And just Ashcombe is tasting phenomenal. That thick, really pretty ash line in the middle. It was kind of used back in the kind of olden periods when the French would make Conte and essentially you'd put ash on the top of the morning makes and then you'd come back in the afternoon and you'd get that quality kind of, you push it together and that ash would still remain. That's where the story kind of came from. Real funky, I'm getting a high chocolate kind of note that's in there. Chocolate dairy, I mean, look at that, incredible. I'm, I can feel it, I'm busting. Mm -hmm. Great texture. You know, sticks around the mouth, gets in between your gums. Really nice um, kind of uh, creme fraiche note that's in there. Nice degree of bitterness, letting you know it's there. Nice um, kind of savoury level. Kind of got that, um, it's kind of like the chocolate that I'm talking about. It's a little bit kind of um, Malteser-esque. It's got that malt to it. Really delicious. I can see why I'm just loving this at the moment. And that white chocolate note at the back is really great. Mmm, fantastic cheese. Next up, we've got Pitchfork. Always got to have a cheddar in these boxes, right? We're British. So this month you guys have Pitchfork, which continually scores well above like any other cheddar. And it's just really great and impactful at the moment. You've kind of had a nice little journey. It's been quite easy. I kind of want to lift it up in the profile of Pitchfork at the moment. It's a little bit impactful, a little bit firing on all senses and kind of takes care of everything really, really well. Beautiful aroma. Floral, a little bit of ferment in there, which is great. That kind of lactic, lemony, hidden height that's there, which is great. I, I, and I'm excited about the texture yet again. Chewy, makes you work. A little more difficult, but for good reason. Tang, up, savouriness is there. Nice minerality that's coming through, a bit like a spritz element is in there, I always come to that. Really nice and clean, grass elements are in there. Little note of kind of uh, a hazelnut, but not too powerful. Oh, and now, now we've got, I've got like pork vibes now, like bacon kind of area. Not like smoked bacon, but that's kind of the animal that I'm getting through. Really great. Mm, just underneath that rind, you know, the, the where the work's done. You know, got a really nice kind of musty vibe, which is great. Really lets you know that it's an artisan cheese and that length, it's massive, massive. I think that'll be people's favorite, you know, it, it hits really nicely. And I've kind of given you an easy ride this month. So I wanted to give you a massive hit of something very, very strong, you know, to part. Now this is like a love it or hate it cheese. Now, when it's right, which it is at the moment, I, I thought when I first bought this cheese on, made by Mario in Yorkshire, I thought it'd be a scenario where everyone would be like, I don't like it, I do like it, 50-50, where the Pecorino blue, um, it's got like kind of this kind of need, it's got this kind of, you know, like a chilly addiction to it where everyone wants to top one another. It's got that element to it. And far more people have liked this. I thought it would just be a blue lover's cheese than it is. I mean, look at that, it's expert craftsmanship. The sheer amount of blueing that's in there is really well distributed. The beautiful ivory color being a sheep's milk cheese that's in there. Let's have a little taste or oh, a smell. 
really malty, very digestive, linking into the ashcom. That's what we want to do. This is a journey of five cheeses. Let's have a taste. Wow. Really, really deep. A little bit sharp, high dairy. Kind of got Stilton-esque. This is this interesting note that's in it. It's not really attacking too much. It's nice. And then it's got a beautiful burst of perfumeness. This is quite easy going, actually. I, I kind of, my palate now is a little bit thinking about different. I thought this one would challenge you. I don't think it will as much. Nice, malty, digestive, little bit of savory, perfume-esque, nice degree of piquancy, that scratching at the back of the throat. Nothing too overpowering. Really, really Moorish. And that's your selection of, excuse me, your selection of five British Arsene cheeses, which uh, we put together for you um, as Britain's first and second Affineur of the year. Remember, you get some biscuits with those as well. I forgot to mention that. Please let us know what you think. You guys always do. Leave us a review. We're an independent business. Our business relies on your reviews. So I hope you really enjoy the five cheeses that I've put together. We only do one box. That's because we want to put all our effort, energies into these cheeses and making sure they're absolutely perfect. So when you eat them over the course of August, you're like, they all work really well. Maybe Perry might know what he's talking about. But I'll catch you next time. So thanks for joining me and uh, have a good August.